another video. If you are new around here, my name is Tressa and I'm a fifth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make videos here on YouTube about teaching, learning, and lifestyle. If any of that interests you, I would love to have you consider hitting that red subscribe button and following along. After going through online learning for a number of months, my number one takeaway, without a doubt, is Google Sites. I created my very own Google site probably the week after schools were closed and we were still in the beginning stages of figuring out what online learning was going to look like in our district. I was actually fortunate enough that one of my grade partners brought it up to us and said that it was the format that she was going to be using to communicate with her students and put up content for the following weeks and she kind of showed us what it looked like and recommended it to us. So actually my whole grade five team, we each made our own website and it is certainly the thing that I would recommend the most. If you are going to be teaching online, you absolutely need a Google site. I'm really lucky in that I'm going to be returning to the classroom in September and get to have my students in our own physical space. However, I actually am going to create a new Google site for my class this year and just use it in a different way than I did with online learning. I think what's really neat about Google Sites is that you can totally design it to suit your needs. So it can be whatever you need it to be. So for online learning, it was my classroom. It was where I put instructions for activities. It was how I communicated with parents. It's where I had links and videos and anything that I needed to share with my class went onto my Google Site. My plan for next school year is to use my Google site mainly for communication with home. I know that one of the things we were warned is that if students or family members are experiencing symptoms of COVID, then they are going to need to leave the school for kind of an undetermined period of time come September. So one of the things that we were told to prepare for was that we would still need to have work available for those students when they are missing time due to illness. Now, it's pretty tricky to constantly have paper packets ready to be sent home. It's a lot of printing. It's often a lot of wasted paper. And we run the risk of that home and school kind of transfer of germs. So I personally believe that if possible, I know not all of our students have internet or have devices at home that can access Google Sites, but if possible, I really believe that this is the best way to keep your students active with those schoolwork, with the content that you're covering when they are missing school. Now, I definitely believe it is impossible to be an online teacher and an in-class teacher for everyone all at the same time. That is a ton of work to do. So that isn't the expectation in my district. If a student misses time, then it's just kind of like homework and catch up work. So I will be putting things on my Google site that they can be working on when they're missing time. But I also just plan on putting some updates on my Google site so that parents know what we're working on in the different subjects. And I can put some videos on there for homework help and pictures of students working, things like that. So I am going to kind of use it as a platform where I can share everything that is happening in the classroom and I'm really excited to have this new method of kind of communicating with parents and that way if they do want to see what we're up to it's super easy they can just head to the website and check it out. So in today's video I thought that I would share my favorite parts of my Google site from last year. Some of the things that I really loved about the functionality of Google sites and some of the ways that I used it that are perhaps different than some of you are using it or showing you some of the features that maybe you didn't know about. So whether you will be heading back to the classroom or teaching virtually, I hope that you can take something away from this video that you can use to create your own Google site this year. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm just gonna run you through what my Google site looks like and tell you a little bit about some of my favorite features. So I just have my web browser open here and I'm fortunate in that I work for a Google friendly district. We are encouraged to use Google Suite for most of our activities or lessons. So I'm just gonna head to my little waffle up here, click on it. When I scroll down, I'm going to see Google Sites as one of my options. Now, of course, if you are starting from scratch like I originally did, you can either click blank and design your own site to be exactly what you would like. And that's what I did because I loved the creativity of the process. 
However, there are also templates here that will help you. So you could click on that and then just change some of the features if you're short on time or just don't wanna go through the whole process on your own. Anyway, my completed site is right here, so I'm just going to quickly open that. Okay, so when I first open my site, this is the screen that I get. So this is kind of my editor screen or my creator screen where I get to design my site. So over here, I have all of the options of things that I can add and change. And then up here is the publish button. So one of the first features I'll tell you about is publishing. So one of the things that's neat, I know in my district, we were sending lessons out on Wednesdays. And so I was able to work on my website throughout the week and my students wouldn't see anything until I published it. And so I could publish it either Tuesday night or Wednesday morning before I needed my kids to be able to see the lessons and everything would go live to the site. And this was an excellent feature because I didn't need to worry about waiting until the night before to embed everything into my site that I needed my students to see. So it was awesome to just be able to click publish. Everything I'd been working on that week for my kiddos could go up there and I could send that quick email to parents letting them know that my site was live. So I'm just gonna give you a quick preview of what my site looks like. So if I go up here, I actually have the option to see what my site looks like published so I know what my families are seeing when they access my website. So right away, one of the cool features is that you have control over so much. So on this very first page, I was able to grab this picture just from Google of bright watercolor painting. And I love that it's the very first thing you see. It's super bright and colorful and just happy. So it reminds me of my classroom. So I really wanted to have this as the very first thing that my kiddos see when they come onto my site. And then of course I just quickly titled it Miss Lloyd's Online Classroom. When they scroll down, they're gonna see my little bitmoji saying hey, and a few little notes about how they can use this site. Now always at the top, I have these pages and I decided to put my pages across the top. I do know some teachers who put weeks. So week one work, week two work, week three work. I decided to do it this way because my kids are at an age where they're able to navigate it and figure it out on their own. But perhaps if you had younger kiddos or an immature class by chance, you may wanna do it week by week or just of course, if that's your preference. So on this very first page, I just have all of my learning plans. So at my school, we were responsible for submitting a literacy learning plan, a numeracy learning plan, and a religion learning plan each week. So I just put those right here on the home page for easy access for families. They could find the week that they needed to and grab those learning plans. Now, as I'm scrolling down, you will see that each week has a different color background. And I loved the visual appeal of Google Sites and how I was really able to control the way I wanted it to look and try to make it really user-friendly for families. So. I just change the background to each week and then you'll see, so for example, with week 11, it has this yellow orange background. Now if we go to art, week 11 in art also has that yellow orange background and that's the same with language arts, math, social, all of my subjects have the same color background for that week. So any of my students who perhaps miss the title or just don't go slowly enough and carefully enough and actually read it, they can quickly just glance and notice the color that they're looking for and know that that's the work that they needed to do that week. So this is what my art page looks like. I love that I was able to find a little bitmoji that is appropriate for the subject. And then art was an optional activity, but I believe in growing well-rounded children. So I did put an art activity up every single week, but it was just something simple. I sent them to a link or a video, or I showed them a picture of something that they could be doing at home of a cute craft that they could make. And a lot of them were themed based on holidays or things that were going on in the world at the time and just super user friendly. So it was really easy. I could put these images right on here, title them, send them to a website with the instructions. Really simple for my kids to just click and go. Now, social studies was also one of our optional subjects, but again, I put a lesson up every week and I stuck some videos in that would help them understand what we were talking about. I put Google Docs in here, links to Google Classroom. These buttons right here, if they click it, it'll bring them right to our Google Classroom and allow them to complete the activity for that week. I could put in documents if I had bought something on Teachers Pay Teachers that I needed to stick up there to help them or something that I found online. 
science was another optional subject for my kiddos, but this one I tried to keep kind of lighthearted and fun and just send them a cool experiment or something that they could make at home and observe. So I put pictures, videos, instructions, websites, things they could click on to do some science each week. Now, if you have been following me for a little while, you're going to know that health and fitness is a huge part of my life. So of course that rubs off onto my kids. And so you'll see it doesn't say optional because I truly believe that exercise is not optional. So each week I gave my kids an activity that they could be doing that would help increase their fitness and exercise throughout the week. Some of the things I found online, some of them are like this. I gave them a little circuit training activity that I made up myself. Just something that they could do often with siblings or family members at home. Just trying to keep their bodies moving while they're stuck at home throughout quarantine. Now the pages that weren't optional or were the subjects that weren't optional were a language art. So I'll quickly show you this. This one's a little bit more intense because I had to kind of be wary of how much time students were supposed to be working each week and also curricular expectations that I did need to cover. So one of the things that I liked for this was I really broke it up into tasks. So here's task one, here's what I need you to do task two, and then of course I was able to put the steps and I think that this was a huge thing for helping families. I know parents really appreciated the step-by-step -step instructions. And one of the things I don't really appreciate about Google Classroom is that the instructions are not really the main focus. It tends to be the activity or the assignment. So I didn't like that aspect of Google Classroom and I love that aspect of Google Sites. So I could really control what my students were needing to do. Step one, go to Google Classroom. Step two, click on Classwork. You know, giving them exactly what they need to do and setting them up for success. Math, of course, was not optional. So I'm gonna scroll down to some of my early weeks to show you what math looked like. I really tried to implement a lot of other things for math, so not just sit and do this assignment because we're missing out on a lot of instruction in math compared to some other subjects, I felt. So some videos that I made for my students on my channel about different methods that they needed to learn how to do multiplication or division, some math starters, websites that I needed them to access to complete activities, slideshows that had the lesson embedded in there. And I just love this button feature. It makes it so easy. They can click that and it brings them right to the website that I need them to be at. And of course, religion was not optional. So this one was more like activities embedded into slideshows. So for most of these activities, I just popped a little Google Classroom button so they could go and access the slideshow that I needed them to go through for that week. Then my last page that I threw on here was links. And I absolutely love this and I wish I had of discovered it sooner because it's so user friendly. Here are all of the links to programs and sites that my kids were familiar with previous to online learning. So I tried not to introduce too many new things online because it was just a little bit overwhelming for everyone. But here are the websites that they are familiar with so they can quickly click them. If it came with a username or password, I put that right there with it so I could kind of eliminate those emails asking me for username and password for different websites. Now I can just quickly click this X down here and it takes me back to my control screen where I can add features. So I'm just gonna quickly show you a couple things about Google Sites. So I love that everything is just right here for me. So easy for me to go through and add things. If I click text box, for example, it pops right up where I could insert some text. I can click images for ones that I have on my computer or ones that they have here available on Google Sites. I can embed links straight from the internet or put websites directly onto my website. I can get anything off of my Google Drive. And I also love this layouts feature here. So this kind of helped me to see the ways that I could organize the information. So something like right here where I have a few different activities that my kids could do, it kind of minimizes the space that it takes up on my site. So those layout options helped me to see kind of the possibilities. I could collapse my text. So that's what I did here. There's some instructions under there, but kind of says the same thing every week. So it wasn't necessary for it to be right there all the time. 
This button feature was major because I could put the name of the button, like Google Classroom, for example, then put the link directly in here. So it just kind of saves the work from students having to type in Google Classroom and find the website on their own. These dividers were huge. So divider is what this line is right here. And I use them to separate tasks and also to separate weeks. So really controls what the kids are seeing, helps them narrow in on what I need their focus to be on. I could add YouTube videos directly into my website, which was major because I created YouTube videos for my kids, but I also use videos from channels like Math Antics or some science experiments that I found online, so that made it super easy. And then, of course, I could select anything from my Google Docs to stick right on there. I could get Google Slides that I made to put directly into my website. Sheets, forms, and also charts. So. If you are a Google school, of course, it's a little bit more user friendly if you're already familiar with all of the aspects of Google. But either way, I didn't find it to be too difficult. And then of course, like always, you have these options for different themes, fonts, colors, so that it totally matches your style and kind of helps your kids feel like you're there with them. Then when you are ready to send that link out, you click this here. It gives you your published site link and you can send that in an email or post it on Google Classroom so your kiddos and their families have access to your site. Like anything else on Google, you can also share it with people. So if you have teacher friends who may wanna steal something from your website, you can share it with them or of course share it with your class. Just be careful because you want to make sure that you're controlling the access like anything else. Those sharing settings on Google can really get you if you're not careful. So as always, just kind of be prudent about that. Make sure that you know what your sharing settings are and you're not giving your students editing control of your website that you've worked so hard on. Anyways, there you have it guys. That is my completed website from last year. I absolutely we love the way it turned out. It completely facilitated my teaching and I love that I still have it available to me. So in the future, when I want to grab a math lesson or see what I taught for a given week in math, I can just head on here, scroll down to that week. You can just grab something, open it, use the video, whatever the case may be. And it is available to me forever. <laughs> So I'm really looking forward to creating my next site. It's probably going to look pretty similar, but a little bit different because the parameters are different. I'm not going to be teaching online, and so I need it to kind of function in a different way for me. So I'll get to put my creative hat on and experiment with that a little bit. All right, you guys, that is it from me today. I hope that you had something you could take away from this video that's going to help you to create your own Google site that you can use virtually or in the classroom this year. Now, like I said earlier in today's video, I am going to be creating a new Google site for my class this year. So that'll probably happen later in August when I kind of have a better idea of what my classroom is going to look like and we're getting closer to that back to school time because here in Alberta, we don't start school until September 1st. So you can stay tuned for that video and I will be happy to share with you what my new Google site looks like. If you have any questions about Google Sites or you have a feature that you have learned about Google Sites that you think perhaps I don't know about, I would love for you to share that with me in the comments below. I think something that's really cool about these videos is that we're able to share and learn and grow together. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.